Welcome to the Nutrition Sport. My name is Gifty Nakainga and so much honored to have Mugambe Cynthia, our senior nutritionist and a dietitian and also Eddie Ziwa, a nutrition expert. Having a senior nutritionist and a nutrition expert, we cannot go any further besides talking of the nutrition. And tonight on the sport, we're going to look at nutritional anemia in children and in adults. Are you having a child or you're an adult? We're going to focus around children and then adults. And if I talk of the, of the adults, I'm talking over uh, all genders, that is female and male. Uh, mothers, husbands, I'm talking about um, men also. Anyway, I'm saying all this because I want to make <coughs> men feel that they're so much involved into this. So we're discussing nutritional anemia. And talk of nutritional anemia, anemia is most often a hidden deficiency with uh, overt symptoms. They are a bit like not many symptoms like in other conditions. And uh, we realize that many policymakers often fail to recognize the massive economic costs if it comes to treatment of anemia. And the service providers often also fail to recognize the health consequences that are brought up by anemia. And on a sad note, that our societies are um, often ignorant of the anemia capability to cause uh, permanent consequences on our health. It's so ups, absurd. And then we're also looking at uh, it causing and delaying children to have their rightful mental and emotional development and also causing a burden into the healthcare system if it comes to treating this kind of anemia. But well, on the nutrition spot, we want to look at of how best we can have uh, this kind of deficiency being corrected and uh, help the children, help the women, help the men uh, thrive and have the proper development milestones, especially in children. And with me and on the show, like I said, I have uh, Cynthia, a senior nutritionist, and Eddie, a uh, nutrition expert. I want to welcome them on board, but I'm going to start with her uh, on uh, Cynthia to, you know, make us understand, being that she's a nutritionist, why is it important mm -hmm. for us to come here and talk about nutrition and want you to understand why is nutrition is important? So, Cynthia, why are we talking nutrition in the first place? Okay, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me, Gift. Um, when, I, when I think of why is it important for people to understand or know what nutritional anemia is, I'll, I'll speak of the consequences which can negatively impact families, societies, and communities. And when we, when we talk about children, if a child is not, um, if a child becomes anemic and it's not corrected in time, they usually develop cognitive impairments. This literally means that a child is not going to be able to learn throughout, mm -hmm. to learn, um, or connect with others, could be on a social or emotionally level, at the pace at which they're supposed to. So that is in children? That is in children. Okay. So when we come to adults, um, of course, in men, I'll speak about the men <laughs> as well. I let me start Ed with the was, men. I was going to speak about <laughs> the men. Okay, I'll let you speak about the men. Let me men talk about... Men speak about the women. Yes, okay. let me talk about um, women of reproductive age. Um, when I'm speaking of a woman of reproductive age, this means that you're between the age of 15 to 49 years. Um, the consequences usually um, include fetal and maternal death if, goes, if anemia is uncorrected. So this is why it is very important for us to pay attention to nutritional anemia. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Uh, like, anemia happens to be a major health problem affecting more than three 0.5 billion people in developing countries, yes. yeah? But then, if we look beyond the developing countries, we mm. have the global world. We yeah. want to understand how is nutritional anemia affecting the globe? Thank you, Gift. Um, I would like, first of all, to welcome our viewers, whoever is tuning in, those on YouTube, those on Twitter, those on all the social media handles. I would like to welcome you because I feel that nutrition is really a big concern in the world not just in Uganda, not just in Africa, even in developed countries, nutrition is a very big concern. And on such platforms where we came to discuss about how we can do things right in the nutrition way, I feel that we are moving a step further, even to economic development, just like she told us, because 
this just doesn't stop on our health it goes ahead yeah. further and also affects our economy and all the other sectors mm. that we work in True. so just like gift said um mm. the global burden yes there is a really big global burden over 2 billion people in the world according to the world health organization are affected by this nutritional mm. anemia mm. and just talking about the women we have the pregnant women they are actually very affected over two-thirds of all the pregnant women have at one point been affected by anemia. Mm. They don't even look at the women that are not pregnant, just their physiological status of being a woman. When you're a woman, you're always, you, there is that period which comes and you have to lose blood. So women are always losing this blood and if you're not doing the right things, if you're not taking in the right diet, you'll find that they're going to become anemic. So there is a really big concern in the entire world and on the global scene, we've seen uh, anemia causing their consequences to countries and to the world economy. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think we're having two words in one that is nutritional and then the anemia. anemia. Of course, yeah. now for me, if you mention anemia, I'll be like, okay, this person is talking no. of I've lost a lot of blood. Maybe yeah. they need yeah. to transfuse blood or something. Yeah. But Cynthia, how can you explain to someone out there what nutritional anemia is? Okay, um, nutritional anemia. Let me start with anemia itself, the word. It essentially means that you have a reduced number of red blood cells or um, reduced hemoglobin, which carries, hemoglobin is what carries red blood cells in the body. Um, but what makes it nutritional it means that its cause is tied to a nutritional um, aspect, which this means that you're not taking in enough. At least maybe you can say yeah. we're feeding poorly. Just <laughs> yeah. mention it. Yeah, <laughs> Which means feeding true. poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means that you you have inadequate intake of iron-rich foods. Um, that's the beginning point, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then we'll touch on yeah. other other aspects as we move forward. But the, essentially, if you're not taking in enough iron-rich foods, you're going to, we'll, we'll call that nutritional anemia. Yes. Yeah, and in addition to that, even uh, people who are taking in enough iron-rich foods, yes. mm -hmm. you'll find that someone is not taking in uh, a, a diverse range of foods. Because apart from iron, mm -hmm. a person also needs B12, they need B6, they need vitamin C, in order for that iron to work well in the body. So yeah. for now, like yeah. if you mention vitamin B, vitamin S, mm. B12, of all those kinds yeah. of vitamins, we can't go into the supermarket mm. or into the market and we mention, give us vitamin B. <laughs> True. We can only get that maybe uh, from a pharmacy, but mm. someone out there would want to relay that if I walk in a, a supermarket or a market, which mm. kinds of foods am I looking out for? But while mm. we're going to discuss all that in a discussion, but basically in this first this segment, we would want to just understand why nutrition anemia is. And like we said, it's a very, very big concern and a health burden onto us and the entire healthcare system. Uh, well, mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions, we're streaming on our different social media platforms, that is YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So make it a point to go there. If you have any concerns, any questions, and post them into the comment section, we shall be glad. But also make it a point to like and follow. You can share with all your friends in your different social media platforms. We're talking of nutrition and anemia, and I think some of us now we're imagining a kinds of plates that if I'm <laughs> eating, what am I eating? Is it only beans, posho, mm. whatever it is? We're going to, you know, understand everything if it comes to nutritional anemia. Yeah. I'm going to go back to Eddie. Uh, you're an expert in this nutrition thing, and sometimes if um, you speak of nutrition, we feel like it's far-fetched. Yeah. I feel like I want you to mention maybe food. There, mm -hmm. I feel like I'll understand. Mm -hmm. Or um, for you, mention um, fruits or you mention vegetables. Mm -hmm. But now, if you say nutrition, I feel like it's something that is broad. Maybe you can help us break it down. For some of us, just understand a balanced diet. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. just break down the nutrition part, only nutrition. It's thank you, Gift, for pointing out that fact. Because actually when people are going out to eat, maybe they're going to a restaurant or they're preparing their food at home, no one ever asks themselves that how much of a nutrient is in this food. Mm. People just look for convenient food. People look for tasty food. People look, even those that look for healthy food, no one goes beyond the extra mile to actually ask themselves what is the nutritional composition of this food. Mm -hmm. And that's quite complex, but 
our role as nutritionists is to make this a simple thing for everyone. So ideally, I believe that, first of all, the very first concept that if anyone wants to follow, uh, if anyone wants to put their nutrition right, is to have a very diverse range of foods. And by diverse, that I, I mean they are going to take in not only vegetables, but mm -hmm. it's a whole range of foods. They have to take in the fruits, they have to take in the carbohydrates, the proteins, the green plants, the red plants, the yellow plants. So you're so, mentioning all that and then you want uh, someone like me to have everything on one plate. Are you putting the costs at the back of your mind? <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, yeah, actually, um, actually, thank you for pointing out that because um, ideally you'll find that in developing countries, that is where we are having a very big burden of nutrition. And, but when you come to think about it, these developing countries are the source of food in the world. These are the, food, these are the countries where the, that feed the entire world. You'll find that Africa provides food for, over the, for the entire world. So you come and ask yourself, how come that it's Africa having nutritional problems the most? Yeah. So ideally the thing is we have the foods, but sometimes we are, not taking it, we are not taking them in the right way or in the right amounts. Or even when we take them, there are certain factors that affect how that food is used <laughs> in the body. Maybe yeah. we can start from the right amount and mm -hmm. then uh, preparation. How about, what do you mean if you say, I think I'll go to uh, Cynthia, mm -hmm. the right mm -hmm. amount and then this bit of preparation. But like I said, we are Africans, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. As long as I get, I get something and I feel like I'm satisfied, I <laughs> don't care what kinds of nutrients it okay. has. Okay. Maybe after I've visited the hospital and mm -hmm. a nutritionist tells me that, you know what, you mm -hmm. need to eat more posho, more okay. rice or okay. whatever, or vegetables yeah. and fruits. So help us understand that bit of the right Amount and preparation. And preparation. Okay. I'll start with amount. Um, for starters, amount really depends on what stage of your life you're at. Mm -hmm. Babies require different amounts. Um, children require different amounts. Adolescents require different amounts. Adults require different amounts. Of course, with children, we look at nutrient dense. Or, but in all aspects of life, we look at nutrient dense. Yes. But um, now, when you look at children, you need then they're experiencing spurt growth or rapid growth. So you'll find that they'll need to eat often, you get. So you'll find that even in most cultures, people won't really pay attention to what kids are eating. Definitely. They'll be like, as long as, mm -hmm. like the child is eating. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now when we transition to adulthood, um, when you clock the age of 25 or above 25, your metabolism starts to, to slow down. So that means now you have to pay attention to your, especially energy intake. Because if you're living a sedentary lifestyle, yes. you're going to end up, you know, yeah. gaining weight, then obesity, then we have the NCDs that come mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So amount really depends um, on what stage of your life you're at. It depends mm -hmm. on um, um, presence of chronic illnesses. Yes. Um, a lot of factors come into play. That's why it's, it's very important to, when you're, when you're paying a visit to the hospital, also pass by the nutritionist to find out how you can eat better mm -hmm. for where you're at. But we also, we don't only stop at the surface level. Um, usually we also encourage people to do um, overall blood checks. Um, do like a lipid profile, mm. do... In Uganda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, actually. Uh, yes, yes. I feel, like, I feel like asking Ed, when is the last time you did a lipid profile? Yeah, like that's, do, yeah, that's do your well. HbA1c, which is going to show us how high your blood sugar is. Do your liver function test. Do your renal test. doesn't have to be all the time, once in a while. But also this yeah. can, it can inform mm -hmm. a decision. Because imagine someone, you, 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 you'll get someone who will come to you and they, they, their image or their thinking is, I'm um, skinny. Yes, but now True. on testing their lipid profile, they have like high cholesterol, high triglycerides. And now imagine you're going to put someone like that on a high energy diet. Yes. So all these things yeah. come into play when we are talking about amount. But I believe yeah. we have and, better options and, that and, are um, not costly. <laughs> and when you're talking about <laughs> amount, it's actually two way mm. because uh, you'll find that when these kids are growing up, there are some mm. parents that are going to focus on let this child eat a lot. So you'll find they're giving them food and a cup of tea at the same time. I'm very, well, and my this, child has appetite for this yeah, particular and, food. And the parent yeah. is happy that the child is taking in a lot, but mm. at the end of the day, taking in this cup of tea mm. or cup of coffee at the same time with food is and affecting just, the absorption. And just just yeah. to Thank supplement you. on that, um, nutrition is really case-by-case -case basis. Um, 
it's not one size fits all. So. Let's stop there. And yeah. <laughs> as our viewers are trying to process that now, mm. I know some of them are thinking, what did I eat for lunch? How did uh, I feed my child? But okay. well, let those questions keep like maybe uh, running mm. on a different social media platforms. You are watching Bethan TV and we're looking at that nutritional anemia. My name is Gifty Nakainga together with Cynthia, a senior nutritionist and a dietitian and uh, Eddie, a nutrition uh, expert. You know, well, uh, talking of nutrition, we can't do this alone without having a different partners. That is the um, Nutrition Rehabilitation Center and then the Allied Nutritionist Professional Council. So the entire body of the different nutritionists, well, it has come up and then it's like, it's a big concern. We need to educate our Ugandans about the health consequences if they do not have their nutrition checked. So we're checking how you're eating, we're checking how you're feeding, how you're drinking and all that. So well, I've seen people are having so many questions. Please keep those questions coming through in our other segment. We're going to be answering a number of questions. So those that are watching us on Facebook, those that are watching us on Twitter, those that are watching us on YouTube, wherever the different platform you are using, Put your comments into the comment section. We're going to make sure that we answer all your questions. Well, we cannot talk about the nutritional anemia without understanding what could be the possible causes. And well, how do I get to understand that I'm starting to having this kind of anemia or this kind of uh, deficiency? Directly, I'll go to Eddie to take us through what could be some of the possible causes for someone like me to end up with nutritional anemia. Thank you, Gift. Um, so when you're talking about nutritional anemia, this is anemia that is attributed to nutritional factors. And these can include dietary intake, can include absorption. And when, you take, when we talk about dietary intake, um, we refer to the foods that the person is consuming, not just in one day, but mm -hmm. over a range of period, uh, a whole, like a whole long period. Um, so I'll measure that period because mm. now I'm thinking <laughs> how long. Uh, now, long. now let's look for example at babies. Uh, when babies are born, the ideally they're supposed to be breastfeeding, but after six months, we expect that you're supposed to bring in other foods to supplement the breast milk. Mm. So we usually find that at nine months, babies that's the time when babies start to get anemic. So these babies are born with uh, enough iron stores in their body. But even the breast milk, a time reaches when the, there's not enough iron in the breast milk, and even the iron stores in their bodies are not enough. So as time goes on, you'll find that these children really need uh, another source of iron, and those are the foods that we're giving these children while we're doing the weaning. And um, ideally, we've seen that uh, babies who are introduced to cow's milk earlier in life are likely to face anemia. So that's one big cause of anemia in these mm -hmm. children. So um, ideally, this cow's milk, it's, it's not a very good food for babies because it, there is a way it affects, it irritates the intestines. So in that, um, they could have some blood loss in the intestine because of this irritation. Mm. And apart from that, um, the breast milk also, the cow's milk, I mean, the cow's milk has a, there is a way it affects absorption of nutrients in the body. So if this child is, taking the breast milk, and again, mm -hmm. the mother is adding on the cow's milk. Um, ideally, it's not a very good thing because the absorption is going to be affected, so. I think Cynthia should, uh, <laughs> being that she's yeah. a woman or maybe a mother. <laughs> because now looking at this era and age mm -hmm. where people have to work and mm -hmm. now someone is just given birth and then mm -hmm. they have to start working to earn okay. a living. Yeah. How best can mm -hmm. they make sure that, that uh, their child is properly fed? fed. Okay. Um, one, um, I'll, I'll speak in context of what you said, like a busy working yes. mother, no man. Okay, um, time has come, you need to go back to work. One, we usually, of course, always encourage, as a nutritionist, we always encourage women to breastfeed. And if you cannot, I feel like in this day, age, and era, there are so many resources that can help you. So my sure. advice would be um, express. You'll find there are bags that are sold where you can that milk can be refrigerated or mm -hmm. even frozen. Um, of course, mm -hmm. please have a trusted caretaker Take at home to look after the child, express that milk and keep it. And then when you come back, you can always breastfeed. Sure. Um, like he said, cow's milk is, is not really a good viable option for mm -hmm. infants because 
the iron stores are low and all other um, nutritional, the nutritional composition does not really fit, is not fit for a child. Mm -hmm. um, but also you find if you can afford, if you can. if you can afford, you can do formula because usually formulas are also, they, they, they try to match up to um, the composition of breast milk. Breast so if milk. you can afford, you can do. Um, mm -hmm. But also a mother needs to understand at six months of age, um, how do I feed my child to make sure that they are getting the necessary complementary foods sure. to suit this new stage of growth? Um, you'll find that in most mothers I've spoken to, in my experience, you'll find that they will give mashed Irish and and the egg, yes. like that, like that, like that. So you need to try. Um, I always encourage mothers, always start with the vegetables. Because once you get a child used to this other food, it's hard for them to transition. Yes. Start with um, pureed foods. You can start with maybe carrot juice, um, give them... Okay, the dark green leafy vegetables are a bit of a gray area because yes. of the taste. Yes. Um, opt for fruits and vegetables. Start to give them mangoes, things they can bite on, purples, watermelon. Because like what we're saying, most of the fruits and vegetables especially contain... Oh the B-complex vitamins that help in the production of red blood cells and also iron True. as well. Yes. True. And Eddie, um, you mentioned uh, when you were saying that um, um, like women that are in food do monthly periods, yes, uh, menstruating yeah. women or uh, girls. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, could it be also a cause of that deficiency in um, those uh, girls or women? Yeah, that's actually a cause of, uh, of anemia. Uh, because when these women are losing a lot of blood over a long period of time and they're not having enough replacement through that, that can be a very big cause of anemia, Ex especially in the girls that are in school. You'll find that they're on a, on, on a regular diet, they're taking in the same food every day, and they're not having a chance to have a, a diversified diet. So you'll find that uh, actually I want, to up, uh, I want to thank some of the policies that have been put in place to give iron supplements to these girls who are in schools and they cannot access the, the, the foods from home or from wherever they are. Mm. Um, because ideally you'll find that um, most of these girls, when they are facing this, these, uh, these problems, they cannot relate that this could actually be a cause of anemia in the Definitely. long run. Mm. And even when they go for medication, no one ever suspects that this could end up like this. And, and one thing about anemia is that um, People only discover that they are anemic after it has come to the to the extremes, because the the beginning signs and symptoms are, are really not specific. You cannot True. they're, they're not really true. conclusive. To anemia. Yeah, and I also want to thank uh, Cynthia for pointing out the fact that when she talked about the mothers and how they should express the milk. You find that there are, there are some companies that have put in place, places, safe places for breastfeeding. And, and I think that's a very big move for, for our country because we used to see this in countries abroad, but now mm -hmm. even here, we've seen companies that are implementing that, and I think that's a very good intervention. I, I, and, it would be good um, if it's a policy that is. Yeah, <laughs> I, actually it would be even be better if it mm. became a policy yes. or something like a law. Mm. And you'll find that um, even when, um, when parents, uh, when they decide to prepare maybe like cereal for the babies, if uh, if a parent actually decides to use this breast milk to prepare that cereal after the child is uh, above the six months, uh, yeah, the breast milk is a far a better option compared to the cow's milk yeah. or any other option. True. I'll yeah. go still to Cynthia. I think you, uh, he's doing a lot of children and he's doing women. <laughs> okay. Uh, me, I've, I've heard of many women who mm. would tell you, I, I don't like the folic acid. Mm. And I, feel like, I, I feel like the test is weird and mm. I can't stand the test. Okay. Like every time I try to take the folic acid, mm. it's causing me news. It's causing every CD. So some yeah. of them completely and also they 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 forego not, they forego okay. the folic acid. Okay. So what could be your take on this and how does it affect the mother and the baby? All right. Um, it, when 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 a woman is pregnant, um, you have to bear in mind that you are carrying someone else, and there's in, there's in, generally on on a large scale there's increased physiological needs or increased needs in the body. So it's important that women out there understand what's going to happen if you, if you fail to take your folic acid. Um, there's a reason as to why they're giving it to you. Because we, 
we we have so many mothers dying at birth because they are anemic or if yeah. there's like the, the the entire process of child birth involves um it in, it will involve blood loss so if that time finds you um with already low iron stores or low blood volume you know what's going to happen and what's going to happen if if there's not um someone to someone of your blood group to you know tran- to give you blood that can be transfused to you at that time and also for the child of course we have this fetal death of course but we also have conditions like spina bifida that that arise because a mother simply wasn't taking their folic acid yeah, it's and true. it's it's really sad if because this is a very preventable issue yeah, yes preventable. on top of the folic acid that you're taking it's important that even then you are taking as much as you can through your diet as much as you yeah, can through your diet and, yes and, and just like put, just uh, put out uh, of emphasis on the diet thing <laughs> still yeah, yeah. I, i feel like we miss um interpret the diet thing okay. yes because now some of us would be like people that have this kind of weight are the ones that are supposed to be on diet people that are maybe in this kind of conditions are the mm-hmm. ones that are supposed to be on diet. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, even basically the, the conditions at which we're living in in Uganda do not favor us to have those things of diet, therefore. Yeah. Maybe people in other countries. So what okay. would you have to say about that? Uh, first of all, there is a, a very big misconception about dieting. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> the way, the, the, way the, the, the media portrays it, the way that people talk <laughs> about it. Yeah. Uh, because when someone mentions dieting people think that this person is on a very strict yes. procedure they're only taking this and only taking this and it seems a very complex thing whenever someone op- says that uh, i'm on i'm on a diet people get the impression that maybe this person is only cut. taking mm-hmm. specific foods is wanting to cut weight is yeah. doing this but actually dieting is me to me it's just baby steps you take baby steps you just change one thing at a time just through it's a gradual process So um ideally for example someone uh, you could you could just take a, a step maybe so that I'm not going to take coffee at the same time I'm taking food mm-hmm. and you just make that your first step now you're fighting the iron malabsorption yeah. yeah and over time you can just keep on adding something add something don't just make uh, uh, drastic changes in your diet because mm-hmm. at the end of the day you want to be able to to cope up with those drastic changes So um me the best thing when it comes to dieting is I always advise people that uh don't do something that is that will seem extreme to you or that yes. something that you feel that is going to bring about a big change in your life because you'll find that someone has been on a specific <laughs> diet for all their lives and and now just because they, they told them they're having this condition so yeah. they just want to break it down and start something new yeah Thank you so much. I think we are about to get into a break by um like we said that we having uh, societies that are often ignorant about the anemia's capability to cause permanent cognitive defects and yeah. also denying children their right to full mental and emotional development. Yeah. If you're denying your children a right to a proper developmental milestone, then it's on you as a parent and as a mother. So we want to educate each one of us that it's very possible that we can make sure that these kinds of deficiencies are dealt with at an early and tender age. But also, I've had someone asking, why do we even have anemia in adults? Mm. I mean... Do we even have anemia in men as the <laughs> nutrition yes. anemia? Yes. So before yeah. we get into a break, I would want you to throw light on that. Um, you've mentioned of the children, the pregnant mm-hmm. women, the menstruating women. So how does it come about in men? Yeah, so men are also susceptible to anemia. If in case they are having, let me say, for example, I've seen so many men that complain about stomach ulcers. It's a very common mm-hmm. problem nowadays. And you'll find that if someone is having really bad ulcers, they're always losing blood in their intestine. And this is something that goes, you'll never see the blood because it's yes. in your intestine, you can't see what's there. But if someone is having ulcers on a daily basis, they're always losing blood. And if they're not having a replacement for that iron, eventually they're going to become anemic. And there are also other illnesses that people get and they affect their iron stores in the body. So ideally me I think anemia is is, is a concern for everyone. everyone. It's not just mm-hmm. about the women, it's not just mm-hmm. about the children. Anyone can be affected and yeah. Thank you so much Eddie. Mm-hmm. Yeah.
So the viewers that are watching live on YouTube, those that are watching live on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, thank you so much. Uh, you are watching Bethan TV and uh, with our partners, the Allied Nutrition uh, Professional Council, and then partnering with the Nutrition Rehabilitation Center. We want to thank you so much. I've had a number of questions, and uh, um, if time allows, we're going to mm -hmm. make sure that we go through your different <laughs> questions. This person mm -hmm. is asking of... Uh, why, as in why, is my belly growing big despite no pork, no <laughs> alcohol? Uh, Annette, thank you so much for watching. And uh, Mayanja, Toby Ken, Sempija Kennedy, Kato Filmon, Barunji Monica, the Allied Nutritionist Association of Uganda, Kamara Daniel, Atugonza Kisembo, Nankunda Deborah, Carlos Bernard, Livingstone Waswa, Matovu Abuna, yes, Abuna, then Bertram Bryan, and then uh, I name Baba's Vivian. Thank you so much. I, I'm having a number of people streaming. Thank you so much for making it a point, but make sure you also share with your friends. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell such that every time we are having these kinds of discussions on the nutrition spot on Beth and TV, you can be able to be a part of that discussion. Well, it's a, num a, a lot of things that we can talk about if it comes to nutritional anemia. And some of you are like, okay, now you've not emphasized the point of uh, how do I tell that I have this kind of anemia? We're going to handle that bit. And we would also want to emphasize the point of uh, the different health consequences that I can come up with if you do not uh, go to the hospital. I'm not saying go to the pharmacy. <laughs> I'm saying go to the hospital and see a nutritionist. We should learn these things. So uh, straight away, I'm going to go to Dan, to, to Eddie, to take us through what are some of those uh, clinical manifestations, that signs that we didn't mention about, that can surface if either a man, a pregnant woman, a child has this kind of anemia. So I'll start with the child. Usually in children, if they are having, if they are the beginning signs that you can, that can tell you that this child is going to get anemia can include the, the child is irritable, the child, if actually you see that the child is experiencing shortness of breath, if the child is um, is having is, is having paleness, paleness of the skin, of the mm. lips, of the tongue, those are the quite common causes of uh, that's the common signs of, of of a child that is developing anemia. But in the long run, you'll find that this child is always tired. The child doesn't play. Mm -hmm. The child is always fatigued. They don't want to do anything. But mm. none of these signs is conclusive. None of the signs can be uh, a, 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 a straightforward answer that this child is anemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only way to actually find out that this child is anemic is to take them to the hospital for a test. They mm -hmm. can do a CBC, they can do, they can check their hemoglobin concentration. Yeah, so ideally... And also, mm. um, if you mention of the child is irritable, the paleness of the skin, mm -hmm. but it's some of these signs or some of these, okay, I would say the signs, we have them in other different conditions. So basically, maybe you can still emphasize on that. Mm. You're supposed at the end of the day to come to the hospital before they mm. diagnose from their homes <laughs> that my person, my mm -hmm. child is irritable, so that means... Basically, that yeah. is yeah. yeah, that's quite true because these signs and symptoms uh, can also be experienced when these children are facing other illnesses, mm. even like malaria, the child will be tired, the child will be weak. Even when they have pneumonia, they can face shortness true. of breath, but that does not mean that they are anemic. So mm. actually, the only best way to actually conclude that the child is anemic is for you to take them to the hospital, they do a blood test, then they'll tell you that this child is anemic. anemic. Yeah. Okay. Cynthia, what happens in adult? Adults. Okay. <laughs> women and men. <laughs> okay, women and men, adults generally. Um, that's they they are sort of similar. Um, so usually you'll have the symptoms mm -hmm. and anemia, nutrition anemia will involve a number of body systems. For example, neuro neurologically, you'll find that like he said, you you're feeling tired, you're feeling fatigued. Um, then also you'll find that um, you're a bit restless, um, but all, some of the signs include um, something that we call angular stomatitis, means that you get wounds on the sides of your mouth. So, so most does it affect your immune system? Yes, it does affect your immune system. So you'll be more susceptible to infections as well. 
Um, so usually even when people get the ones on there, they're like, oh, maybe it's malaria. So mm. they are not really specific to anemia. But I think some of the things that an adult can look out for, even children as well, mm. look at your eyelids. It's a, look at the beds of your eyelids. They're supposed to be pink or dark pink. So okay. if they are pale, that can be a warning sign. You look at your nail beds as well. Um, even Some of us put on <laughs> You look at your palms as well. Okay. Um, that, we also have something that we call, okay, it's atrophy of the tongue, but it's not very specific, but you can always look. If your tongue has like a very shiny or glistening um, appearance, mm. it mm. could be a sign of anemia. But at the end of the day, um, if you're looking at all these things, your eyelids, your nail beds, um, even general paleness of the skin, do go and get a checkup. And okay. also you're feeling fatigued, you're tired most of the time, because most, most patients come in with this and they think they have malaria mm. or it's an infection, yeah, yeah. but it's just, you That's don't really have true enough because iron. you come to realize that whenever our parents discover things like my child's eyes are pale, one parent will run to the uh, maybe a pharmacy and buy an iron supplement mm -hmm. sure. or buy um, something or any other medicine. But usually these iron supplements are also toxic, especially for children. Mm -hmm. You'll find that uh, one of the biggest cause of poisoning in children has always been iron. Even when it is prescribed for adults, you are advised to keep it away from children mm -hmm. because uh, adults can actually metabolize this iron. But for children, especially the ones below five, it's very hard for them to... To, 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 to handle this iron when it's taken in high concentration. So I advise parents out there, whenever you discover that maybe your child is yeah. anemic, don't just run to the store and, uh, and buy an iron, <laughs> store, uh, an iron supplement or buy folic acid. Self-medication is Yeah, self-medication yeah. is really bad. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Uh, I know a time is not enough. Mm -hmm. and I see people that are <laughs> on uh, YouTube, they're like, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, I mm -hmm. mean like, we can do this over yeah. and over Again. and over. Mm. So or someone is asking a question. Um, someone was asking, why is my belly growing big despite that I do not do pork or alcohol? Mm. I feel like uh, we would want to handle this bit of um, what, what are some of the foods that are out there that can help us treat the, diff the nutritional anemia. Okay. But I feel like we should first answer him. Mm, because yes, then we can go into okay. the different foods. All right. So that so, is Kennedy, uh, same picture. Okay, Kennedy. Um, it's not just <laughs> um, alcohol and pork that make your belly grow fat. It, like I said, it will depend on what, what's your lifestyle. Are you seated most of the time? Are you doing some form of physical ex activity? Because mm -hmm. in adulthood, your intake needs to be lower True. than your expenditure. True. You get also, we need to look at your diet. Are you having enough fiber in your diet? Mm -hmm. Are you eating more calories? True. And by calories, most of the foods that we have on today's market are what we call empty calories, meaning that they only have calories. They don't come with anything else. The junk yeah. foods and the likes, all those are empty calories. Yeah. But also, even with our African diet, you'll find, you'll find women in, in, um, who are not really eating chips and what not every day, but they're also gaining weight. Sure. Not even women, men as well. But that means um, on your plate, when you get your plate, you've put matoke, you've put a sweet potato, you've put a yam, you've put a pumpkin. You don't need all that because remember your metabolism is already low. Mm. So we really need to look at the calorie content. Okay. So me as me, I usually tell people, I'll tell Kennedy in this case, um, Look at the calorie content, content. on your mm. plate. Mm. Um, just leave carbohydrates, especially, to just one serving. Then have more vegetables and then sure. the protein source. There is a question for you, okay. Cynthia, and yeah. this is um, uh, Pamela is mm. asking that uh, how much iron do we need a day as adults? How much? Okay. Um, you need... Daily, RDA is about, correct me if I'm wrong here, Eddie, yeah. is it about 20 milligrams? Yeah, ideally yeah. 20, 20 milligrams. milligrams per day. Uh, but um, you know when you're trying to advise these people, no one is going to calculate how many milligrams are in the food. So actually, <laughs> we'll if, if, you we'll can have just one, if you can just have one serving of now for that... For them to understand that those 20 milligrams, mm. people can access black strap molasses, just one serving, a scoop that can give you enough iron for the day. If you can mm. access spinach, 
two servings okay. of Dark spinach thing. will give you enough iron for the day. Mm. And ideally, um, the other foods that we can look at uh, that are iron rich, we have liver, we have meat, and yeah, so I know when someone goes out in the restaurant, they need to get to know how many just, milligrams are there, but yeah. I'll just add on to what Eddie has said. When yeah, we're looking yeah. at iron and intake, um, we have what we call absorbable iron, and iron that is not mm -hmm. readily bioavailable or readily absorbable in the body. Yes. So absorbable iron is liver, mostly animal protein, liver, kidney, fish, poultry, um, that's readily absorbable. But now that not, the one that's not readily absorbable, we find it mostly in dark green leafy vegetables. So as you're taking these iron-rich foods, also have a vitamin C-rich food to enhance the absorption of iron. As Thank well. you so much. I think I personally, I have a concern if it comes to people that have HIV, mm. either our children or adults. And yeah. um, how would you advise them if it comes to how their plate is supposed to look like? Because I believe anemia mm. can still manifest Unfist in them. And in also HIV. like you mentioned, there are other different conditions that can mm. also trigger this kind of anemia and being that um, in a setting we do not know if I'm having this particular condition, this is what I'm supposed to eat and this is mm. not what I'm supposed to eat. Okay, um, if you are HIV positive generally, we, are, we always recommend a balanced meal on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> <laughs> and usually, I know it's hard to achieve yes. because we talk about these things, but the reality is when we talk about, when it comes down to economics, sorry, money, and even social status in, in homes, it's hard to achieve these things. But I always tell people and my patients as well, aim to at least in a day, have you had a serving of a vegetable? Have you had a serving of a fruit? Look at, look at it that way. Then you can slowly, gradually evolve to lunch. Mm. At least I have this and this. And then dinner, I've had a fruit and I've had a serving. So it's, okay. you, you cultivate the discipline. It's being intentional. Okay, so yeah. I, I think we're advocating yeah. for behavior change. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes, it's <laughs> all about to end it. Yes, yeah, please. and I think another way people can actually, if you've been uh, diagnosed uh, with anemia, one other thing you can try to mind about is the fiber intake. Fiber is very good, but you should mind. If you mind. say fiber, can you break it down for <laughs> so us? So fiber, fiber are, are foods like cabbages, okay. the foods that are actually rough. Uh, you can look at um, the, the vegetables, the greens, mm -hmm. those are foods that have a lot of fiber. So if you're anemic and you're trying to replace your iron, maybe if you take uh, the meat, you shouldn't mm -hmm. take it at the very same time you're taking this cabbage because mm -hmm. the fiber is going to prevent the absorption of the iron. And also the other foods that can prevent iron absorption include uh, the oxalates. Oxalates are usually in teas, in coffees. Mm. Yeah, so even milk as yeah, well. Even milk, yes. Thank you. Then there is also, um, I would now go, being that we're talking of nutrition or anemia in mm. uh, children and in adults. Mm. Uh, for the adults, I would want to look at these people that are in advanced ages, like old age okay. he mentioned of the malabsorption syndrome like mm. some of these people their uh, their absorption is poor if it comes yeah. to these kinds of nutrients so mm. how would you advise like especially someone that is old maybe they're in their late 70s 60s maybe and mm. above and uh, they have that kind of a condition yeah so for the adults for the elderly one thing i would advise is that they should actually when they're going to take their foods they should be very cautious um, for example, if they, are, if they are intending to take in iron, they should actually have another, for example, they can have juice. Juice is rich in vitamin C. So orange that vitamin, juice. yeah, that orange juice will help you to, with the absorption mm -hmm. in the body. And they should also avoid these other foods that the coffees, for example, if they're having okay. their main meal of the day, they should make, if they want to take coffee, they can take it maybe like two hours before they're taking the main meal of the day. That will not affect the absorption. When yeah. you talked about taking tea with food, I realize it's a very common practice here. A lot of people take tea. You mean tea. here? Where are we at? Uh, no. <laughs> here in Uganda. Okay. Yeah, here in Uganda, yeah, oh, here in Uganda or in Kampala, or in okay. our communities. Yes, people true. always take tea with food, but you're not realizing yeah. that. You mm. might have the iron-rich foods, but now the tannins in the tea are preventing its absorption. Its absorption. Yeah. Okay, um, still we have people that are watching us uh, probably on Facebook, those that are on Twitter and those that are on YouTube. This is Bethan TV and on our different social media platforms we are 
Bethan Television. So you go and then look for Bethan Television. And also, I believe there are those that are watching on a different channel. That is the Allied Nutrition uh, uh, Center. I want to thank so much the Allied Nutritionist Professional Council and also the Nutrition Rehabilitation Center for making this happen now. So being that we have been... Um, um, uh, like we started saying that we have a very uh, big global burden if it comes to nutritional deficiencies, and we're here to make sure that uh, we get you all the information that you need and maybe if you go back to your communities and the different societies, you can make an impact, you can make a change, maybe from your home or starting at individual level, you can make a change thinking of how am I supposed to eat and we mentioned about uh, the preparation part of it and as we're trying to wind up the session, I'll go to Cynthia to okay. take us through. We've gotten many challenges of how we are supposed okay. to prepare particular foods okay. such that we still get those particular nutrients that okay. are we supposed to get in those foods. All right. I'll start with especially the vegetables and fruits because they are very delicate and they contain most of the nutrients that we we want. Um, when it comes to preparation of vegetables, I see people have a habit of soaking vegetables. <laughs> now when you soak, you are leaching out most of the nutrients there. Always, when you go to the market to buy, let's start with where you're getting them from. When you go to the market to buy, always look out for fresh vegetables. Yeah? You can always see the fresh ones from the ones that are a bit damaged and yes. scarred. Um, so when you take them home, when you take them home, wash under running water and either steam, boil, or stir fry for about five minutes. Five minutes is enough. Same thing with fruits. Um, don't refrigerate them for too long. Um, preparation should be don't, don't even expose them in air for so long because now they're, they're also losing. They're not yeah. supposed to be exposed in air for so long. They're not supposed to be soaked in water. Wash under running water and mm. cook for about five minutes. Yeah. Thank you so much. At least I believe that if any of us is going to forget forever we've said tonight, <laughs> they're not going to forget of how to prepare the break tables and yeah. also uh, maybe the fruits. Our yeah. time is running so fast and we cannot go beyond this. Uh, mm -hmm. But maybe we can encourage you to make sure that every single Thursday you are tuned in Beth and Television and you are stream, uh, you are watching live on our different social media platforms to learn more about how best we can boost our immunity through taking the right nutrients at the right time. Well, I can't go any further, but I want to thank so much, Eddie, a uh, nutrition expert. And then I would want to thank so much, Cynthia, for coming through. She's a senior nutritionist and a dietitian, dieter. You know that those things are not easy. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming through. And we want to thank so much our different partners, that is the thank Allied you. Nutritionist Professional Council in partnership with the Nutrition Rehabilitation Center and Bethan TV. Thank you so much. So till next time, uh, we want to wish you the best of the time as you take care of your nutrition.